Welcome to the Delaware OBGYN Resident Lecture Series. I'm your host, Jim Manley. Today we will be discussing GYN ultrasound and focusing on the normal ovary. This is part of a lecture series designed for our OBGYN residents here at Christiana Hospital and our sonographers here at the Delaware Center for Maternal and Fetal Medicine. A discussion of the normal ultrasound appearance of the ovary is particularly of importance because of the variable appearance of the normal ovary, particularly in the reproductive years. The ovary typically cycles monthly with the first half of the cycle demonstrating recruitment of follicles in preparation for ovulation and the second half demonstrating resolution of the follicles and corpus luteum in the absence of pregnancy. The normal ovary can show a wide variety of appearances. While it is important to recognize pathology, it is as or more important to recognize the normal ovary and avoid overdiagnosis of pathology to avoid unnecessary surgical intervention or unnecessary follow-up diagnostic testing. Today our guests are two of our residents, PGY4 Kelly Rustaller, class of 2013, and PGY3 Audrey Merriam, class of 2014. So first we'll talk about follicle development. In an ovary there's a bunch of follicles um, and in each follicle it's an oocyte surrounded by granulosa cells. So each month what happens is you have multiple follicles that are recruited under the influence of FSH which is follicle stimulating hormone. Um, and what happens is the granulosa cells which are the outer layer of cells increase in size dramatically with um, under the influence of the FSH and you end up getting one dominant follicle. Um, the granulosa cells under the influence of FS FSH produce estrogen which helps sensitize the follicle to the further effects of FSH. So you get a positive feedback cycle and that FSH increases the amount of estrogen or estradiol that's produced and then in turn you get um, an increase in the sensitivity to the FSH. So like I said before, one follicle is destined to become the dominant follicle in the group that has been recruited. The um, oocyte located in, is located in the cumulus oophorus, which is like a little bump in the antrum. What happens is the fluid collects within the de developing follicles to create this cumulus oophorus. So this is a picture of an ovary, and what you can see in this picture are multiple follicles that are developing. You can see one to the um, left of the screen looks like it may be becoming the dominant follicle. And you can see the echolucent um, area, which is the um, fluid that's collecting within the follicle to increase it in size. And you can see that the other follicles within the ovary are starting to regress in size. Uh, here's another picture of an ovary with follicles developing inside of it. As you can see, it doesn't look exactly like the one before. Ovaries can have different num numbers of follicles developing at different times, so it's important to realize that on ultrasound. So after the oocyte is extruded, the follicular fluid um, decreases dramatically and the follicle kind of involutes. At this point, the fo follicular diameter decreases. It's important to keep in mind that as the follicles are developing, the dominant follicle can be anywhere from 16 millimeters to up to 30 millimeters. Um, so an ovarian cyst of 3 centimeters can be within normal physiology. At this point, once the follicle started, once the oocyte has been extruded and the follicle has started to decrease in size, um, luteinizing hormone is going to begin to stimulate progesterone production. Progesterone peaks about one week after ovulation um, and when the oocyte is not um, fertilized then um, the progesterone declines. However, if pregnancy does occur, uh, the embryos uh, begins to produce HCG and this in turn stimulates continued progesterone production, um, which becomes the corpus luteum of pregnancy. The corpus luteum um, persists to support pregnancy during the first trimester and is normally three to five centimeters in diameter and can occupy up to 50% of the ovarian mass. So seeing a cyst on an ovary during the first trimester of pregnancy is generally not concerning and is normal. There are three types of functional cysts follicular cysts, corpus luteum cysts, and fecal luteum cysts. 
So follicular cysts are by far the most common and form when dominant follicles fail to rupture or when immature follicles fail to undergo atresia when a dominant follicle is picked. So as we mentioned before, normal antral follicles develop fluid and become cystic um, and are referred to as cysts rather than follicles once they get above two and a half centimeters. Um, and they appear to be dependent on gonadotropins, luteinizing hormone LH, or follicle stimulating hormone FSH. The majority of follicular cysts will resolve within four to eight weeks uh, by atresia or by silent rupture, which uh, the patient may not notice. That's why it's a, uh, many physicians will, once they see a follicular cyst, will just write for a follow-up ultrasound in a few weeks to see if it has resolved. Corpus luteum cyst is another type of functional cyst. Um, they are cystic and they undergo gradual reabsorption with a limited amount of hemorrhage which can potentially form in, in the cavity. Uh, approximately two to four days after ovulation has occurred, uh, vascularization of the corpus luteum will occur and capillaries invade the granulosa cells. There is spontaneous bleeding that occurs, usually it's limited. This then results in reabsorption of the cavity um, and of the corpus luteum. Um. Again, most corpus luteum cysts are small and they're not referred to as corpus luteum cysts until they reach above three centimeters. Um, however, the average size for a corpus luteum cyst is about four centimeters. These are all various examples of corpus luteum cysts. Um, you can see how there is uh, more blood flow demonstrated in these compared to the follicular cysts shown earlier. Uh, we also notice that there's some debris um, within the cystic structure, which is related to the blood um, and the degradation of the blood, as, as we mentioned previously. Fico luteum cysts are the last type of functional cysts and are the least common of all the types. Um, and unlike the other cysts, they are almost always bilateral. Um, they form from the production of excessive gonadotropins, and the individual cysts range in size from one centimeter all the way up to 10 centimeters. Ovaries can have moderate to massive enlargement due to the fecal luteum cysts, um, and approximately 50% of all molar pregnancies will have the presence of fecal luteum cysts. Um, another thing is that it's um, commonly seen with twins, um, and as well as ovulation induction medications. As you can see here, these ovaries look much lar larger than the ones previously seen. They have many more cysts um, within them, um, but still considered normal um, because they are thecaludian cysts. And keep in mind when diagnosing thecaludian cysts that you uh, want to look at the other ovary um, because, again, they're most often bilateral. These are hemorrhagic cysts, um, not functional cysts. Um, you can see the debris within the cyst. Um, um, in one of the pictures, you can see the layering out of the blood from the rest of the fluid in the cyst. Um, these are common. Thank you, Drs. Merriam and Grustaller. To summarize, the ovary is an organ that undergoes significant structural and functional changes every month in preparation for possible pregnancy. The first half of the cycle is characterized by follicle recruitment and growth, the development of a dominant follicle, and subsequent corpus luteum. Both follicles and corpus lutea tend to regress but may enlarge to be classified as cysts and persist for variable periods of time. Corpus lutea may become hemorrhagic cysts these can have worrisome appearances with solid and cystic appearing areas with septi. They typically lack vascularity within the mass but may simply require time to see the regression that differentiates them from neoplasm. Follicles tend to be multiple, bilateral, simple, less than 2.5 centimeters. Follicular cysts, simple, greater than 2.5 centimeters, regress over weeks to months. Corpus lutea, unilateral, in patients who are ovulating, thickened wall, ring of vascularity, often irregular collapsing wall. Corpus lutea cysts, greater than 2.5 centimeters, ring of vascularity. Theta luteum cysts, multiple simple cysts, bilateral ovarian enlargement, associated with conditions of increased HCG, like a mole or multiple gestation. Hemorrhagic cysts, any of the above functional cysts may have internal hemorrhage, giving a complex appearance without vascularity and that may resolve over time. 
The important thing is to be aware that these are far more common than neoplasm in reproductive age women and therefore should be the highest in the differential diagnosis, allowing time for observation to make the diagnosis.